afternoon um, welcome to the University of Bristol um, it's a pleasure speaking to you um, my name is David Thomas I'm the Latin America representative for the University and I'm very pleased to be able to give you this presentation with information not only about the, the University of Bristol but also the city of Bristol itself and the experience that you will have by coming to study with us uh, in a great university and in a wonderful uh, university city Next slide, please. So, uh, the University of Bristol is based in the city of Bristol, and the city is a wonderful place to be. Um, uh, recently, uh, the city was voted the best place to live in the UK by readers of the Sunday Times newspaper. It's an exciting, diverse student city um, with more than 54,000 students in the city across the two universities. Uh, the University of Bristol, um, has around 24,000 uh, students and we're based right in the center of the city so you live the city life as well as living the campus life uh, in the university um, as well as being the best city to live in for the general population uh, the city has also been voted the best for student life uh, recently in 2015. It's also a UNESCO city for film and was the first UK city to be voted the European Green Capital um, so it's a city that has a lot to offer in terms of uh, what students are going to live and experience, lots of things going on, a great fun place, very uh, culturally diverse, um, and also a, a city with a conscience, a city that's very interested in um, making an impact in the world, both from an environmental and other aspects. So a place where you can really develop and grow as a student. Next slide, please. So the University of Bristol, as I mentioned, is based right in the heart of, of the city of Bristol. It's not a campus outside the city. The campus itself is right in the heart of the city. So as I said, you're going to live the city life and the city experience as well as the university campus experience. The university is one of the best universities in the world. We're ranked in the top 50 uh, in the QS World Rankings, currently number 49. Uh, but over con uh, consistently, the university is ranked amongst the top 50 universities in the whole world. Um, in the UK, we're ranked as one of the top five for research. That's alongside the likes of Oxford and Cambridge. Um, in Europe, we're ranked as the ninth best for teaching excellence in, uh, in, in the continent of Europe. So again, as well as offering you world-class uh, experience of working with professors who are at the top of their field, with top research in the world, you're also going to experience first-class teaching experience. Uh, there are 13 Nobel Prize winners associated with the university, including Sir Winston Churchill, who was the Chancellor of the university uh, right up until his death in uh, the 1960s. Um, we are home to the world's best uh, university-based business incubator. Uh, this according to the UBI Global Rankings 2019. Bristol itself is uh, one of the top cities for um, new startup um, businesses particularly in the area of technology and uh, internet-based uh, companies. Uh, there are a second only to London 
uh, where the population is far superior to Bristol, which is a small city, only 450,000 inhabitants in the center of the city. So uh, a, a great place to start up uh, business beyond your studies uh, at the university. Um, we are ranked in the top 10 overall uh, in the UK as well. So again, emphasizing the excellence of the university. Um, there, there's around 25% of the uh, student population is international. Uh, that means students from outside the European Union. Uh, so we get a lot of students also coming to Bristol from across the European Union, places like France, Spain, Italy, Germany, uh, etc. Uh, but beyond that, 25% uh, of our student population is from outside the European Union. So that's a very diverse, a culturally diverse uh, uh, international population for the university. And Bristol is a, a member of the Russell Group. Uh, the group of universities who are well known uh, for their research intensive activity. As mentioned above, uh, Bristol is ranked in the top five for its research, uh, hence giving us the level of excellence that uh, you will receive as a student at the university. Next slide, please. Okay, so Bristol is what is known as a comprehensive university. Uh, that means that we offer a, a vast range of degrees and programs, as you can see from this slide. Uh, these are our five faculties, art, engineering, social science and law, health science, science and life sciences. Uh, and within those, uh, there are a whole range of different departments. So we offer programs all the way from uh, anthropology and uh, archaeology, right through to zoology in terms of alphabetical order. Uh, the university doesn't offer every single program. For instance, we don't have a school of architecture, but uh, you can see there from each of the uh, links in this slide, uh, the different departments within which a whole range of uh, degree programs are offered. So the choice of degrees in Bristol is, is immense and vast. And it's very important for uh, students when considering a degree at Bristol or any UK university to uh, think about what they want to study, what they're interested in studying, and apply to the program of study accordingly. In the UK and in Bristol in particular, you're not studying to do a particular job, you're studying a subject that you're interested in, that you enjoy, that you're good at, to develop skills and abilities that will be transferable later uh, in, the, in the world of work and professional life in your future. So uh, the key thing is to look at the programs, look in detail, understand the offer, understand uh, the program of study, the facilities, which are second to none in the UK, um, and you will find a first-class education in the degree subject that you're most interested in. Uh, next slide, please. So we're back to rankings here. So this is subject rankings now. So this tells us at a world level, the quality of education in different uh, areas, subject areas within the university. So uh, the highlights are earth and marine sciences, Veterinary science, both 15th in the world, and social policy and administration ranked 19th in the world. But we have nine different subjects in the world's top 50, and 35 subjects offered are within the world's top 100. So again, emphasizing the quality of education that you're going to receive at the University of Bristol. Next slide, please. Uh, then again, this is, these are now national rankings. So again, a range of subjects where the university is ranked in the top 10. Again, emphasizing uh, the quality of education in these uh, different subject areas. Next slide, please. And uh, further rankings here also telling us that within, within uh, these subject areas, the university is ranked nationally in the UK as a top 10 university. So uh, again, thinking about the different options that you have available as a student, and thinking about the quality of education that you're looking for, uh, this gives you a strong indication that in Bristol, uh, the education and the programs of study offered are really top class. Next slide, please. Uh, it's not just about the degrees. Uh, obviously, people come to the university, uh, be it in the UK or in their home countries or in another country in the world, to get a good degree and then go on to get um, a good uh, professional career afterwards and one of the standout uh, aspects of degrees in bristol is the relevance of the degrees that you study to the world of work i mentioned a couple of slides ago that you don't come to bristol to study to do a particular job unless you're studying to do medicine for example or maybe veterinary science a vocational degree dentistry of that nature 
Uh, but what you are learning at Bristol are skills and abilities that are transferable to the workplace. So Bristol students are amongst the most sought after graduates in the UK. Um, and this, these, this slide shows us that um, graduates from Bristol are among the highest paid in the country three years after graduating and that 92.5% of students graduating from the university are in employment or in further study um, very soon after, after they, they graduate. So these are important matters for you to take into account when considering uh, not just the educational aspect, but also the future employment aspect that Bristol offers you. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, in a most recent um, uh, survey, uh, Bristol graduates were ranked the fourth top graduates by uh, top uh, employers in the UK. Uh, so that puts us very, very high up uh, the, the table in terms of uh, graduate employment. Um, also important to note is that of our undergraduate degrees, a range of them offer the opportunity to have a year uh, of study in industry. 13 of our programs, these are mainly in the engineering and sciences area, uh, but we also have a range of degrees or range of opportunities where um, an internship or studying or having a placement within industry, if it's not part of the actual program, there are opportunities for you to take a summer or to take a different, uh, have a part-time opportunity in a company in Bristol uh, that will be relevant to your course of study. Our career service is first class, so uh, we always recommend that from uh, early on in your early uh, time in Bristol, from your first year onwards, that you should register with the career service. These services, the services beyond the fees you pay for the study are absolutely free, uh, and the career service will uh, do training and coaching with you to help you put a good CV together, to train you in interview techniques and make you aware of different opportunities, both uh, part-time or internship opportunities during your study, but also opportunities for you to um, apply for jobs or professions later on when you're coming up towards graduation. So lots of employers visit the university. We have uh, careers fairs uh, every year in the university. And from early on, you should start to make yourself known to potential employers um, so that so when it does come to the time of applying for graduate positions, uh, you have made yourself known to potential employers in and around Bristol. What employers are also looking for in potential uh, employ future employees is uh, outside of good, being a good student and having obtained great grades, that you've done other things outside of your uh, regular study. So coaching and volunteer opportunities are available in Bristol through the career service, and this will further enhance your CV and hence enhance your opportunities for future employment. Uh, we also run a mentoring scheme through the Bristol Alumni Network, which is an, an important, so that through that you can uh, gain access or gain knowledge of different jobs or different opportunities that may, may be available and have students who have graduated from the university and gone through the process uh, guiding you and supporting you as you look uh, to gain employment after your studies. Also, that's a, a very distinctive part of Bristol Bristol's offer is we have a range of degrees uh, that are combined with innovation. We have a, an innovation entrepreneurship center in the university uh, and they offer a range of degree programs that combine a more traditional um, degree program um, across a range of disciplines with innovation. Uh, and the idea here is that you are developing ideas, developing your capabilities in terms of uh, problem solving, looking at real world solutions, uh, and building up your capabilities in terms of what are the uh, characteristics and abilities that employers are looking for that again will enhance your future employment prospects. In the final year, these are four-year undergraduate programs that lead di directly to a master's qualification. And in the final year, you'll actually be working on a real-world uh, problem, a real-world project set for you by an organizational company uh, from the Bristol area and you working in a, a team, a multidisciplinary team of, of students will have to come up with a solution and write up that solution. Uh, and that solution can be published, uh, will be put into practice by the organization who um, made that challenge or put that challenge forward to you. Hence you, you gain a master's on the basis of the project that you work on, not individually, but as a group of students working across multidisciplinary teams, which is a real preparation for work 
in the future. So that's a very attractive option within the university's um, educational offer. There's also the Bristol Plus Award, which is available for all students to apply to as they go through their undergraduate studies. Uh, next slide, please. So here's just some examples of uh, destinations where some of our graduates uh, may well uh, end up working. Um, this is uh, divided by the different uh, faculties. So from engineering design, there's some very well known names there, economics, sociology, modern languages, biochemistry. These are just some examples of the kinds of companies or positions which students are occupying uh, once they uh, graduate from the University of Bristol. Um, so there's a, quite a range of, of, uh, of opportunities there across the different disciplines. And this is just, as I say, a selection of some of the top um, employment destinations for our, for our graduates. But I mentioned earlier on that Bristol is a big you know, a city for startup companies. So a lot of students are also uh, moving on to, the, um, to do startup work with the incubator. And that's also a, a very important uh, area of success for our graduates. Next slide, please. Uh, and here, uh, just this is the mentoring scheme that I mentioned. So uh, the, this is the, from the different organizations where mentors are based and uh, giving uh, input to students who are still studying at, at the university and are looking to develop their, uh, their applications and their CVs uh, to gain employment in some top employers. So I think you can agree that the list of uh, employers there is very impressive. Uh, and the fact that we have students uh, or graduates from the university working within these organizations and supporting students still at the university is uh, a very attractive um, pro proposition for you, our future students. This is exclusively from the, the Faculty of Engineering, but there will be other examples from other faculties as well. Here we're just summarizing. Next slide, please. Uh, well, we've been talking a lot about opportunities in the employment area, but there are also global opportunities within Bristol. A number of our undergraduate programs, as well as offering uh, placement within um, companies and organizations, there's also the opportunity to study and travel abroad with partner universities, either in Europe or across the world. So um, we have over 500 uh, students traveling abroad every year. Um, over 160 different partner universities across the world um, and over 250 work placements available. So range of opportunities and uh, these opportunities are available to everybody. Those are just some numbers there, but it's down to each individual student to inform themselves, uh, understand the opportunities that are available according to their faculty and their department and put themselves forward so that they have the opportunity to take advantage of these incredible global opportunities so we can have truly global graduates coming out of Bristol in the future. Next slide, please. Okay, so I mentioned earlier on that the University of Bristol is right in the heart of the city of Bristol. In the map there, you can see the, the dark blue area. That's the, the main campus area. Um, and around it, you can see uh, these little uh, house-like figures uh, in brown and blue with numbers on them. Uh, that gives you an idea uh, and you can see that the names of the residences in the top right hand corner and on the left some photographs of just some of those uh, residences. Um, so for international students, all international students are guaranteed a place in their first year in one of the university residences. Uh, that's not an obligation, but it is a guarantee. Uh, so if you are an offer holder who has accepted their offer, uh, you will get a, an email from the university confirming uh, the options and confirming a date for you to make your application for a place in our residences. There's the accommodation page which you can uh, you can um, consult at any time and start to view the different options that are available. You normally uh, apply for up to three different residences, put, putting your preferences in one, two, three order uh, and the accommodation office will normally guarantee you a place in your first or second uh, choices. Okay, so here on this current slide we have uh, an example of the number of beds that are available in 26 halls of residence. Uh, applications open normally on the 1st of May of each year and the deadline for applications is the 30th of June. 
you need to have accepted your offer um, for study uh, to make the application to the um, to the accommodation. Um, an offer once once all applications have been received by the 30th of June, offers for your accommodation that you applied for will be accept, uh, sent out by the 20th of August, uh, and you'll need to accept the offer by the 24th, so fairly soon after. Um, then later you'll be required uh, to pay a deposit for for the um, the residents. Uh, all under 18s who are applying for residential uh, accommodation with the university are advised to stay on campus. One point from the map that uh, maybe I didn't point out clearly is that uh, almost all the residences are within walking distance of the campus. So uh, we're talking 10, 15 minute walk in most cases. So you'll be very close to the campus if not on campus itself. But as, as I say there, the recommendation for under 18s is that you stay on the campus and you will see from the map uh, that there are a range of, of, of um, residences that are on the campus itself. I already mentioned the guarantee. That's a guarantee exclusive to international students from around the world. Um, and there it gives you an idea. There's more information on the page. We've got the link at the bottom there. But costs range from £93 uh, per week up to £254 per week. Um, there's a range of different options. So why from, well, it's quite a, a wide range of prices. Um, so some, some accommodation is more basic than others. In some cases, you share both the bathroom uh, with up to six, seven or eight students, as well as the common areas, which include a kitchen. Uh, but then at the top end of the scale, we have studio apartments that will have their own bathroom and their own kitchenette. So uh, depending on your own budget and your own preferences, um, you need to be selecting uh, the, the, the type of accommodation you want and the price will, uh, will show accordingly. On the accommodation page, for every single residence, you can check out uh, what accommodation, what, in, what facilities are available in the accommodation and the price per week of each accommodation. So you can make an informed decision about the type of accommodation you wish to, uh, you wish to have during your first year at the University of Bristol. Next slide, please. So here we've got some more photographs of different styles of accommodation, as you can see. We've got some older buildings. Some, I, for, I forgot to mention in the previous slide, but uh, some accommodation includes uh, all your meals. So in the older traditional uh, halls, like in the first picture there, uh, we include, or you can opt for a meal plan where all your meals are included. Other accommodation is all self-catering. So again, you've got a decision make, to make. Uh, do you want to be preparing your own meals or would you like to have all your meals prepared for you in the accommodation? Um, if, you, if you choose self-catering, uh, it doesn't mean you have to prepare all your meals. There's lots of cafes, bars and restaurants both within the campus and around the city and the vicinity of the university that offer uh, relatively cheap, inexpensive meals. Um, so you can combine uh, preparing your own meals in the accommodation or at, with um, buying meals occasionally outside and within the, uh, the student union has subsidized uh, canteens and restaurants where you can get uh, decent meals at a very decent price. Um, also, I would say that the in, the in accommodation where you're doing your own catering in the kitchen, that's a place where you meet um, uh, people and make friends with people from all around the world uh, and get cooking tips from each other. Um, it's a way of making friends and a way of developing uh, skills and learning those life skills which living independently are going to, it's going to teach you. Sometimes our first attempt might not be the greatest, but we learn from that. Uh, and we have people there to help us and uh, to work our way through cooking for ourselves. But the range of options is, is very broad. So look at all the options and consider what it is you want for your first year of study and for living in Bristol. Next slide, please. Uh, so here's some more photographs inside the accommodation. So a typical bedroom, they'll be quite small, compact bedrooms, but uh, with all the facilities that you need, with your desk, a study area, uh, lots of storage space, and your own, you're free to decorate, as you can see from the, the top photograph there, according to your own tastes. Um, the rooms when you arrive have been cleaned, uh, and all personal effects from the previous um, residents have been removed, so you can make uh, the place like home for you. Um, there's an example of uh, uh, one of the uh, Unite Student buildings on the left. That's one of the, the more recent modern uh, buildings. 
And then uh, the photograph on the bottom right is an example of the common areas that you have inside um, the residences. So as well as uh, the kitchen and uh, dining areas that I mentioned, you've also got small play areas and what have you. So you've got a chance to hang out with uh, your friends and uh, relax uh, when you're not doing your personal study. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, the student's union is a very important part of life in, in any British university, and particularly within Bristol. So automatically, when you register for the university, you'll become a member of the student union. Uh, that doesn't mean you're becoming a, a political activist within the students within the union, but you are joining uh, the organisation which supports students throughout their programme of studies, and which is home to all the different clubs and societies uh, over 400 in the University of Bristol. So on the day that you register and do the formal registration for your course of study, uh, you will be in a, a big uh, gymnastics hall and around the hall there will be a, all the tables will be of different sports clubs and societies that you can join the very first day that you're uh, entering the university. So this is a great opportunity for you to join in activities that you already enjoy or try some new activities that maybe you've not done before. But there's all kinds of societies from uh, classic sports societies, football, tennis, swimming, you can see there, gymnastics, dance, theatre, through to come more quirky organisations like the, the Cheese and Wine Society or the Harry Potter Society. All kinds of different things that you can do uh, so that as well as um, coming to Bristol to study, you're making friends and socialising um, and growing and gaining confidence uh, in yourself as an independent human being and having time to relax uh, is, and making friends is a very important part of that. Uh, the Student Union also has connections with a range of different local organisations where you can do some, some volunteering as well as through the career service I mentioned before. They do provide support for students in terms of making sure the student voice is heard with uh, the senior management uh, of the university and they offer advice and support uh, for students. So any problems you may have encountered or maybe difficulties you're having uh, in terms of registering uh, with banks or with doctors, uh, any advice you need. There are trained uh, people within the student union, as there are also within the university, to give uh, international students particularly the support and help they need to settle into Bristol and anything that might uh, occur during your stay within the university. Uh, all these uh, are free of charge. They're all part of what the university has to offer. Next slide, please. And then, uh, well, in terms of uh, scholarships and opportunities for scholarships, um, these scholarships are available exclusively for international students. That means students who are classified as international. That means uh, not students from the European Union or from the UK. So for undergraduate students, we have uh, scholarships that range a uh, maximum of £10,000 for each year of study uh, down to £5,000 for each year of study. As you can see, the number of scholarships is limited. They are competitive scholarships, uh, but all students are entitled to apply. There are deadlines for these scholarship applications, so um, you can uh, check that out on the website or request information from the university or from myself um, in terms of what the deadlines are for application for these scholarships. Uh, the requirements are detailed below. The exceptions to apply for these scholarships are those applying to programs in medicine, dentistry, and veterinary science. The clinical uh, subjects are excluded from these scholarships. Next slide, please. Uh, finally, uh, maybe we need to know where Bristol is. Uh, so we're down in the southwest of England. You can see from the map there, Bristol is about an hour and 40 minutes on the train from London, um, easily accessible from London and from London Heathrow Airport. We do also have our own airport in Bristol. Um, so it's very easy to travel into Bristol uh, from anywhere in the world via Amsterdam, for example. Um, and then we have connections uh, both to destinations within the UK, like Edinburgh, um, and other European capitals where we have low-cost airlines, EasyJet and Ryanair, flying to different places on the European continent. So uh, if you have a free weekend or free time outside of uh, holiday time, when you're not returning home, uh, then you can uh, enjoy uh, a trip uh, very easily to different parts of Europe. A very good place, uh, Bristol, to travel both within the UK and across Europe. Next slide, please. And well, we're going to finish with quite a lot of information now about uh, Bristol itself. 
So we've already mentioned it's a great place to live. Uh, it's a cultural hub with loads of things going on, art galleries, theatres, museums and concert venues. Uh, every year there's a balloon festival, Fiesta. There's a nice photograph in the background there showing us that. Um, but there's also every month of the year there are different festivals taking place within, within Bristol. So uh, any uh, cultural music uh, events that you're interested in, theatre, drama, there's lots going on all throughout the year for you to enjoy and take part in. Um, Bristol is a very safe city. Um, I mentioned it's small and compact. You can walk everywhere around the city. It's been awarded the purple flag for uh, safety in the UK, which is a, an important recognition. Um, and in terms of spaces, um, there's, there's lots of uh, green space in the city. So over 450 parks and green spaces. So we're not a huge um, metropolis in that sense. Uh, there's the beautiful harbour area, which you can see on the picture there. Um, we have some outstanding uh, natural beauty all around Bristol, green areas. The Clifton Suspension Bridge takes you across the River Avon to beautiful green parks and spaces, uh, which we should see some photos in, in the following slides. Next slide, please. So there's a nice um, aerial view of the city, focusing particularly on the university. We can see the main building of the university, that's the Wills Memorial Building, that's the centerpiece of the campus. Then all this area around is uh, the university. As you can see, even with, uh, within the university area, there's nice green spaces. This is very much the center of Bristol um, and the university right at its heart, as we've already mentioned. Next slide, please. And here's some more photographs now specific of the university. So Bristol uh, University dates from 1876. So we have some traditional buildings and we also have some more modern and contemporary buildings, as you can see here from the variety of uh, photographs. So in the top right hand corner, you're inside the Wills Memorial Building. Uh, in the top left, uh, that's a uh, graduation ceremony, one of like the grand halls. And then down uh, the bottom part, we have uh, some of the uh, newer buildings, the, the Life Sciences Building, which is one of the quietest buildings in the world with hardly any vibration, allowing scientists and students to perform some of the most complex um, experiments uh, available. Um, so yes, both new and older buildings uh, giving the university as well as the city an awful lot of character. Next slide, please. Uh, and here's a bit more view of the city. So I mentioned Clifton Suspension Bridge. There it is, the top left. It's the landmark uh, building or construction for the city of Bristol. It bridges the city of Bristol with Clifton on the other side of the River Avon. Uh, and then you can see lots of photos of the city. In the top right, that's actually a photo of the music faculty uh, right in the heart of the city. And then we have uh, down below different photos of the harbour and the colourful houses that surround the harbour area on one side uh, and newer buildings on the other side of the harbour. Really very beautiful and very, very easy to walk down there from the campus area, 15, 20 minutes walk. And uh, any, any Saturday or Sunday, there's lots of things going on down there for students to enjoy. Lots of families also out with their children, enjoying what Bristol has to offer. Next slide, please. And again, more photographs. Uh, this print may be reflecting some of the quirkiness of Bristol, um, as well as being a major engineering hub. Uh, we're also an art center, and at the bottom left there, you have images of uh, the very well-known film Wallace and Gromit. There's a competition every year to produce uh, the best Gromit, uh, and the university, along with other organizations, enters that competition. Uh, as you can see, those uh, models of uh, Gromit there, um, on the bottom left hand corner alongside the Clifton Suspension Bridge. So yeah, lots of fun, quirky things going on. Uh, the train station is there, bottom right, um, which is the direct train line to, to London, non-stop train service. And top right is one of the city's uh, beautiful um, commercial shopping centres, the Cabot uh, Centre there. So uh, lots of things to do in and around Bristol. Next slide, please. And more nice quirky pictures now, the art scene much more. We've already mentioned Wallace and Gromit. A number of people may have heard of Banksy, the street artist. He's from Bristol. Uh, so a lot of his work uh, decorates the city. Uh, we can see some examples of that there. So there are Banksy tours arranged in the city. Uh, so if you're, if you're keen on art and street art and modern art, uh, 
there's, that's a great way to get to know the city and to get to know the works of Banksy a little bit better. Next slide, please. Well, that's the final slide. So um, again, here you've got some contact information. As I said, my name's David Thomas. I'm the university's representative in Latin America. Uh, there's a Skype address for me if you're using Skype, or you're very welcome to contact me via email or any questions you may have. Uh, we're pre-recording this particular session, but yeah, you're welcome to contact me at any time so that we can answer your questions and give you more details about studying in Bristol. Thank you.